We we wanna, yeah, we want to turn to this right here, talking about severe weather, but we don't want you to panic because it is Severe Weather Awareness Week, and Grant, this morning we're talking about rip currents. Yeah, I think just having a, a general understanding of the threats that we have here in Florida, whether you're new to the area or you've lived your entire life, you know, some things might surprise you, one of which might be the dangers coming from our oceans and rip currents. Head over here with me, guys, and take a look at this. Rip currents uh, claim more lives than hurricanes, floods, tornadoes, and lightning combined, believe it or not. Now, that's on average. Obviously, when we have a big hurricane like Ian, and even Nicole, those numbers can be offset like what we saw last year. But I think it's good to just know what you're looking at here. And, and do you know what you're looking at? Can you see the rip current? Is it where you have those breakers there to the left and to the right? Actually, the rip current in this graphic is right there in the middle. It's that current of water that's being pulled away from the beach and, and that's something that you don't want to get caught up in and those rip currents occur when you have those incoming waves from the strong winds pushing up against the coast ultimately that water has to go somewhere right and it's going to find that path of least resistance and it's going to find some place like a, a sandbar that breaks or just that current of water that then rushes away and that current can pull you under and that is the rip current not to be confused with the term rip tide that's not a real thing it's a rip current, a current of water where that water is then being pushed away or pulled away from the beach, and that's where you could get taken away. The best way to escape a rip current is to try to remain calm, but try to swim parallel to the beach, swim out of that current of water, and then ultimately you should be able to get away from that risk. Now, some things that you can do when possible, swim at a lifeguard protected beach, obviously having that set of eyes on you. And if you do get in danger, that lifeguard can come out and help you. Uh, pay attention to beach warning flags out there. That's something we'll talk about next half hour. What do those flags mean, the different colors? And then swim at least 100 feet away from those piers and jetties because there is a greater risk for rip currents in those areas.